What is up guys, it's Kyle Bone and I'm back with another video. So today's video is going to be a little bit different, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you guys some tips for handstands that I use whenever I was training my handstand so that you guys can get it to be able to do handstand. And then right after that, me and my brother Caleb, we're going to be testing our strengths with our skills such as planches, back levers, front levers, handstands, you know, all that good stuff. We're going to be testing our strength limits right after I give you some tips for handstands. So let's get into it. The reason why I'm making this video is because a lot of you guys ask me for some handstand tips. So that's what we'll be doing right now. I'm going to be showing you guys some tips that I did whenever I was training my handstands so that you guys can perfect it. All right, so the first tip I have for handstands is to make sure your hand placement is good because the reason why having a good hand placement is good because right whenever you do a handstand, if your hands are not even, your, your momentum and your balance is going to be off. So let's say you do a handstand with your right hand more in front than your left. This is what it's going to look like. It's harder to balance than versus doing a handstand with, with your hands centered like this. As you can see, whenever my hands were together like this, it was in the same position, it was a lot easier than doing it with one hand in front of the other. So this is a common mistake people make whenever they first do handstands. So what I suggest you do is, before you do a handstand, place your hands where it's comfortable, maybe shoulder width apart, Make sure one hand isn't too forward and too far back. Because usually when people do handstands, they'll stand and they'll be standing on their feet and then they go straight into it. But they don't know where to put their hands. If you guys are standing in this position on your feet and you're going into it like this, don't have one hand in front and then one hand back. Have it in the same position. Put your hands over your head and then go down and make sure it's in the same position. So that's a little common mistake that people make. And a tip for that is just to make sure your hands are even whenever you go into a handstand position. And then it'll be a lot easier to hold. You can hold it for a long time. There you go, that's the first tip. Now moving on to the second tip is pressing the floor with your fingers. So most people when they do handstands, they'll keep their hands flat like this. And what I mean by pressing the, the floor with your fingers is don't keep your hands flat all the time. You're going to be pressing with your fingers just as if you're using your fingers to push your hands up like that. Press with your fingers and then it'll, it'll create a balance between you and your body. Because if your hands are flat, nothing is centered. So what you want to do is put your hands on the ground and then press with your fingers so you can engage your hands and then it'll engage your shoulders a lot even more. So let's try it. So before you even start, make your hands flat and then press your fingers and then go into it. There you go, just like that. Or you can even start with your hands flat like this, go into a handstand and then press your fingers like that. What pressing your fingers does when you're in a handstand position is if you're leaning too much forward and you press your fingers, it's gonna make your body go back instead of forward. Because it's gonna equal out the force if you if your body is going too much forward. Moving on to the third tip for handstands, it's pressing your shoulders down. So what I mean by that is this. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when your shoulders are just in a normal position instead of versus pressing down. So that was depressed shoulders, like you're not engaging your shoulders. Now I'm going to show you guys what it looks like when you engage your shoulders. I don't know if you guys caught that, but whenever I was doing the handstand, whenever I was in this position, whenever your shoulders are pressed, when you push up, your shoulders are going to go down and they're going to engage like that. You can even see my scapula, my back, it goes forward, it goes, it protracts like that. That's what I mean by pushing down on the floor, pushing your shoulders down so that it really engages. Also, it's going to make everything stack because when you're in a handstand, everything is in a straight line. There's no bend, there's no arch, nothing. Everything is straight in a straight line, it's stacked. 
You want your body to be stacked all the way from your head all the way to your feet. So if your shoulders aren't engaged, it's gonna put a lot of stress on there and it's gonna hurt. So what you wanna do is push up like that. Even whenever you're in a handstand position, like this, push up, and then your shoulders should be engaged and then everything will be stacked. It's gonna be a lot easier to hold a handstand like that too. So that brings us to the fourth tip. The fourth tip I have for handstand is control your kickoff. So this is a common problem whenever people start doing handstands. They, whenever they kick off from a handstand, they usually go too much forward and they fall. This is what it looks like. Like that. So to avoid that problem is, instead of kicking up with two feet, try to kick off with your dominant leg first and then bring the other leg together as you kick off. So this is what it should look like. So if you're starting, if you're, if you're starting from the standing position, this is what it should look like. Keep one foot back, bring your hands up and go down. Right here, as you can see, this foot, my dominant foot, it's gonna go up ready. And then as it goes up and my whole body goes up, this, your other leg is gonna follow along and then you're gonna keep it together. So this is what it should look like. Exactly like that. And also, usually if you guys are starting from a, with your hands on the floor like me, I personally like to start with my hands on the ground because it's already set up. My hand placement is good and everything's even. And also it's just a lot easier to get into a handstand position. So if you guys are starting in a position like this, like me, do the same thing. Your dominant foot goes up as you kick, then your whole body falls along, and then your other foot follows with it as it goes up, and then you put it together. So it's like this. So one, two, three. Just like that. And then you hold. Because a lot of people, when they tend to do handstands, they, they kick off too hard, and they don't know where to put their feet because they just let it wobble or they spread it apart or bend it. When you bend your legs like this, See, like that, I walked forward. That's not controlling it. You don't want to bend your legs like that, guys. You're going to be just kicking off at the right point, keeping your legs together, and then holding. Just like that. All right, guys, that was it for the handstand tips. Now, me and my brother Caleb, we're going to be testing our strength for skills right about now. So what we're going to be doing is, first, I'm going to go first with my Planche, I'm actually gonna be doing full planche and also straddle Maltese. I did post a video on my Instagram on my straddle Maltese progress and I want to see if I can do it longer so I'm gonna time both of those and then my brother Caleb, he's probably gonna do some handstands, maybe a tuck front lever, I don't know, whatever he's comfortable with, he's gonna do that and then I'm gonna be doing some other stuff. I'm gonna be doing front lever and back lever so I'm gonna be doing a lot of things today. I just got finished showing you guys some tips for the handstands and then now I'm going straight into doing skills. So let's get into it. All right guys, so I have my brother Kip right here. Say hi. Hi. All right, so we're gonna be testing, hold on, wait. All right, so guys, so we're gonna be testing our strengths with our skills or our strength limits with our skills. So, so this is really great to do because it shows you where you're at whenever you're doing your skills for calisthenics, such as planches, handstands. It just shows you where you're at and how far you've become for your progress. So that's what, be, that's what I'm gonna be doing with my planches and my Maltese, and also my front levers, my back levers. So I'm gonna see how far I've come from like way before whenever I could only, only hold a planche for like three seconds. I ho I'm hoping I can hold it longer than 10 seconds. I think my planche may be around 10 seconds. How long do you think your handstand hold is gonna be? I don't know. Wait, what? 10 seconds. 10 seconds? What about your, uh, your, your 90 degree holds? I don't know. I don't know these. I don't really try them. Oh. So I'm going to be using parallettes for most of these exercises for the planche and the Maltese because obviously I can't do planche on the floor yet. And I don't know if he, you can, you can go first or me? Mm. I'll go. All right, I'm going to go first. I'm going to do full planche first and then I'm going to do Maltese. So let's go. Hello. I'm using no shoes, no shoe gang because these shoes are pretty heavy on my feet even though they're really light. For some people, these things are really heavy. 
So I'm be using a no shoes because I want to feel really light whenever I do this. So let's go, no shoe game. <sighs> All right, so I'm hoping to hold it around 10 seconds or so. I think I can hold it around 10 seconds because the last time I tried it, which was a couple days ago, it was around 10 seconds. So let's expect to hold it longer. Let's go for it. Man, the only reason why I stopped is because I didn't want to break that form. When you're doing any of these, if you are guys are doing this, when I, if you guys feel like you're breaking your form, just stop. Because you want to sacrifice your form for however long you're holding the scale that you're doing. Alright, so I'm going to take a break for a little bit. And then he's going to do his handstand hold. So, let's go Caleb. Alright, ready? 3, 2, 1, go. Nice. I don't know, how long do you think it was? 15 seconds. 15? Good job. Alright, that was pretty good. I'm gonna move on to doing Shadow Maltese. Let's see what I got. Alright guys, got this pair set up. The reason why I'm doing it on the low, or <laughs> the reason why I'm making the pair lift lower is because to me it feels a lot easier because one, my body is closer to the ground, and two, it's on a lower angle and height, so it's gonna be easier for my body to so, yeah. And also, I've been practicing Maltese on the low, on the on lower parallettes instead of higher ones. So let's go for it. I'm hoping for it to be around three seconds. Oh, oh man! I gotta rewatch that and see if my form was good. But whew, that felt pretty good. All right, so he's gonna be doing a 90 degree hold. He's actually making the parallels higher. He's gonna reconnect it because it's a lot easier to do a 90 degree hold whenever your parallels are higher instead of lower. So if you guys are doing this, free, you're free to do whatever you want. Just make sure you do not break your form because your form is the most important thing whenever you're doing any exercise or skills. Ready? Yes. You ready? Yeah. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. Straight. Hold that. Wait, lower. Right there. <laughs> okay, try it one more time, one more time, one more time. Take your time. Alright, three, two, one, go. Okay, never mind. We'll just pass him the 90 degree hold. Do. Wait. Alright, so since he can't do 90 degree hold right now because he's pretty fatigued, he's just gonna stick to doing L sit hold because. I believe that he can do Elsa hold for at least 15 seconds, maybe longer. Let's see it. All right, you ready? Three, two, one, go. Elsa hold. <sighs> nice job. How long do you think that was? 20 seconds. Alright guys, so I'm going to be doing one arm handstand hold. So I've only attempted this a couple times and I could only hold it for like one, one second at max. So I'm going to see how I can hold this. I'm hoping to get at least longer than two seconds. I don't know. Let's just see. Dang, that was super bad. All right, let's say no. I gotta start working on one arm handstand holds more longer because you guys are doing this and you guys seem to have be having trouble with the skill that you guys tried a couple times but you can't do it. It's really great to do it to see your your limits so that you can go past those limits and then you can train to hold that exercise or skill even longer. So now let's move on to doing front levers and back levers. Caleb is going to be attempting to do pull hold. He's going to see how long he can hold it. I'm just trying to break sweat. 
So he's hanging on the bar now. Don't let go. Hold on. Alright, ready? Three, two, one, go. Nice. All right, that was pretty good for the pull up hold. Now, I'm gonna see how long I can hold my front lever. I'm hoping for it to be around 10 seconds, maybe more. I don't know, I haven't really held a front lever for the longest time, so this is really great to see how far I've become from my front lever because usually before I can hold it for like maybe five seconds, I don't know. I'm hoping to hold it longer than 10, 10 seconds. So, let's go. All right guys, so I'm gonna be doing my front lever hold. So, let's go, ready? Three. Two, one. Woo! Dang, you can, you can hear the whole cage. Oh, I was shaking. That's how bad I was shaking. I'm so fatigued already. Oh man. What are you doing? Tuck planch. What? Tuck planch. Tuck planch. All right, he's gonna hold as long as tuck planche. Mm -hmm. Let's see how far you've come. Ready? Three, two, one, go. There you go. How long do you think that was? Five, ten seconds. Ten seconds? Mm -hmm. All right, so I decided no, I'm not gonna do back lever. And I know you guys probably wanna see me do back lever, but I personally am not gonna do back lever because I'm so fatigued right now. I'm just, I just did a lot of hard, really hard skills that I usually am having trouble with, like full planche and Maltese, those are really hard. Those two right there, full planche and Maltese, those both killed me. And especially this front lever right here, that killed me too. So I'm gonna skip out on the back lever. I'm gonna do that another day, maybe in like a future video. I'll see. I'll tell you guys how long I can hold a back lever. So, yeah. You wanna do anything else? One more. Uh. See if I can do the 90. 90 again. Yeah. All right, guys. He's gonna reattempt the 90. I like that attitude. Three, two, one, go. Hold right there. Hold that. Nice. Ooh, longer than last time. Way longer than last time, right? That was good. All right, I'm drenched in sweat, and so is he. Are you drenched in sweat? Yeah. yeah. You are? I'm not that sweaty. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video of me showing you guys some handstand tips that I did in my past journey whenever I was training for my handstand so that I could perfect it. And, and I hope you guys that are watching right now can use it and incorporate it into your workout regimen so you can perfect your handstands. And also me and Caleb showing you guys our strength limits for skills such as front lever, you know, full planche, Maltese, and all, all that good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And so with that being said, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And definitely share this video with a friend who wants to know some handstand tips that they can do to perfect their handstands. And also watching me and Caleb testing our strength limits. Also, if you want to check out more of my content, follow me on IG at Calisthenics. I upload every Wednesday and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Time. Wait, no. All right, guys, I upload every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Central Time. You want to say anything? Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out.